So a few months ago, I got into making custom magic cards in my Discord, and I had a very small custom card contest that really honestly you guys loved, and it was so much fun. Um, there's a YouTube video with this thumbnail that had it, and you guys just made so many cool cards like Barricade, Schrodinger's Cat, and it was awesome seeing the community working towards a common goal and helping each other get more creative and bouncing ideas off each other. And I just thought that was such an awesome community experience. So on the back of that contest, I decided to have a second one. So on December 14th, I posted a, a Discord post saying that I am announcing the start of my second custom card contest and I'm trying to do these every other month and we'll pick a different theme for each one. So the theme for this card contest was custom cube cards and I really wanted to bump up the quality of submissions because in this video, there, there were a lot of fun cards, but like Barricade, you know, you're not going to print that as it is. It looks really funny. Schrodinger's Cat was a pretty high standard for how good a card should look. So I wanted a second contest that was professional level cards that if you did want to make a cube, you could print them into a cube. And I ended up doing exactly that. I started making my own high quality custom cards to make a custom vintage cube. I had posted a video a couple weeks ago or months ago, I don't know, time is weird now, that was going through my ideas for how to make a custom vintage cube. And the thing I came to the conclusion is that because of the nature of how magic was when it was originated, blue is just way stronger than all the other colors, regardless of which cards you include, unless you intentionally exclude strong cards, like in such a recall and time walk. But those cards are so iconic and they're actually quite a bit of fun to play with. So I decided to just make my own custom cards to help rebalance the colors so that every color can be equally exciting to draft and play. And alongside that, I decided to use the custom card contest as a way to spark ideas in the community, spark ideas in myself, so that we could together build it an amazing cube that's balanced, it's fun to play with, and it's full of cards that all of you guys and I have designed. And that just seemed like such an awesome idea. So that was the original motivation behind the custom card contest. To incentivize that, I did say that I was going to make the prize uh, once I'm making the cube, I will hand sign the proxies that I've made and send them to the winners. So there are some stakes and you guys responded unbelievable. In total, there were over 350 submissions, I think. So I'm just going to keep scrolling here and you can just see how many cool and unique cards people have made. Obviously, it took a while for people to figure out how to make the cards look high quality. And we kind of, as a community, developed that understanding of what looks good and what works. And you can see kind of as I'm scrolling, basically, the cards are getting better and better as people are posting more and more cards. But there's, I mean, there are so many here. And so the contest grew kind of out of control to the point where I would not be able to go through all of these cards on my own and hand pick a winner. So we had to do something different. And the solution I came up with was to take all of the cards and put them into smaller groups because any type of voting system that's just looking at 300 or 400 cards at one time is just going to be overwhelming. So we batched each group of cards into between 15 and 20 cards. There ended up being about 20 galleries or exactly 20 galleries. So I'll show you a couple of them and just show you how the voting worked and how it was. So I hosted it on my website and basically we got the community to upload their own cards to this contest. And so now if you click on them, I'm working on developing the software more, but you can see the title, they have a place to write a description, and then you're allowed to vote on your cards. So you go through and say, I like this card and this card, and each person got five votes in total. So they picked the five out of you know 15 or 20 that they liked. And in round one, the top five cards from each category advanced. So here's one gallery. I'll just show you a couple more. Here's gallery two. There, I mean, there is an unbelievable amount of cards. So much effort and work went into this, and the cards honestly look amazing. So here's Gallery 2. Someone made a Flip Planeswalker, Twig Lanowar Sapling. Uh, he adds green and put a loyalty counter on him if you control a tree folk. I mean, it's just, there are so many cool designs. Fading Faces, Black Black, Fading Five, Enchantment. When it enters the battlefield, exile your library. You can't draw cards. At the beginning of your upkeep, put a card exiled with Fading Faces into your hand. So that's like a really cool demonic tutor type effect. Um, like so much awesome artwork and stuff went into this. Magus of the Profusion, skip your draw step, 
whenever you play a card, draw a card. So I think this is based around another card, but it's a human wizard, so you can kill it, and it's much easier to interact with. I'm, it's just, there's so many awesome cards in here. So if you guys want to go through them, I'm going to post the links to all the galleries in the description. You can just go through and view all the cards. Round one was tough because not everyone can advance. I'll go to a different gallery. People like having their cards shown on here. We'll go here. Yeah, honestly, a lot of awesome cards. Puritanical Priest. I really like the name and the aesthetic of this card. <laughs> it's pretty fun. Um, but yeah, not all these cards are going to advance, right? Out of all of these, only five cards are going to continue. And so we had the voting, and I'll go to the results now for round one. Because um, it narrowed it down from like 350 to down to 100 cards, which was pretty rough. So the results for round one, I went through all the data and posted them into my Discord. The way it works was like a bracket type tournament thing where each gallery was its own contest and the top five from each gallery advanced. So here is gallery one and then you can click on see iridescent disposition won its contest. So this is a hideaway land that adds colorless and then colorless tap you may play the exiled card without paying its mana cost if an opponent owns four or more cards in exile. Just a really cool card. Uh, Norn's Almsman 1 Gallery 2, and that is a 2 mana 2 2 Vigilance, spells cost an additional Phyrexian to cast. So it's like a really like fun taxing effect where your opponent has to decide whether they want to pay life for everything or pay mana. Seems like a really fun like Thalia. It's good in aggro and good in stacks because, you know, eventually if you are taxing your opponent's life total enough, the, the 2 2 Vigilance is going to start attacking and their life total is going to get really low. Gallery 3, Chromatic Utopia. Card's big. Um, sacrifice Chromatic Utopia. Search your library for a non-basic land card. Put that card onto the battlefield, then shuffle your library. That's a really cool effect. It's like a fetch land that obviously you have to have a little bit of mana because you can't just tutor any land. But this does so many things. It's fixing. It gets utility lands. I like this card a lot. And so if you want to go through all of these cards and see you know, which one's won, there's 20 galleries of just cards and cards and cards. Um, definitely go through it. I think this card was one that I really enjoyed, Youth Youthful Flamecaller. It's like an interesting take on Young Pyromancer, Goblin Electromancer. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, add red, and then red sacrifice it, exile an instant or sorcery card in your graveyard, you may cast it this turn. So it adds mana, and then when you need cards, it adds cards. It's a 2 mana 2 one. Seems like a really sweet card. Round 2 got much harder, so now there's only 5 galleries, and each gallery has exactly 20 cards. And all the cards in here are just, I mean, th these are the top, you know, top 20% of the 300 cards that everyone submitted as their best idea. And some of these are so cool. So we'll go through some random ones. I don't have time to go through every single card, but all the links are there if you want to go explore for yourself. So this is Rat King. He's a two mana three one. At the beginning of your end step, create a one one black rat assassin creature token. Then lose life equal to the number of rat tokens you control. Sacrifice another rat to make target player lose life. Sacrifice three other rats to become the monarch. Wow, that's a very strong card, but it's weak, right? It's a two mana three one, so if they kill it when it enters, it doesn't actually do anything. It's only over time that it does quite a bit of work, actually. Um, let's do Darkest Dreams. Until end of turn, you may pay life equal, rather, equal to the converted mana cost of spells you cast, rather than pay mana cost. So this is essentially Bolas's Citadel. But you can only do it from hand, right? Yeah, so this works rather from hand where Citadel plays them from the top of your library. So it's a really cool card. The artwork is fantastic. I, I really like, for me, the artwork is important. So here's the card we saw that advanced earlier, Chromatic Utopia. And we'll check out some other galleries. This is Gallery 2. Here's a card that I saw. I absolutely love this card. Achromatize, one in a colorless. Colorless is a theme in my cube. It is being treated like a sixth color in Magic. So... Getting colorless won't be too hard. This says counter target spell unless its controller pays one for each different color spent to cast it. That's really cool. I think probably this could just cost colorless. I think it would be a lot stronger there because most of the time this is going to end up being mana tithe. Although it does punish multicolor spells a little bit harder. I think that would be fine as just colorless. Uh, Ruya Masked Rebel. Whenever she deals combat damage to an opponent, choose one. Until your next turn, creature spells cost two more to cast. Or until your next turn, non-creature spells cost two more to cast. 
So that's a pretty snowball-y type card where basically if you start hitting your opponent with her, they're going to not be able to cast spells and over time that's going to be pretty backbreaking. If you keep hitting, they can't cast spells and you start winning there. Um, so there's just a lot of awesome cards. Again, I don't have the time to go through all of them, but I'll pick out the ones that I really like. Land Razor is cool. So when it enters the battlefield, you may destroy up to two target lands you control. For each land put into the graveyard this way, create a tapped waste token, a basic wasteland with tap and colorless. You may play an additional land on each of your turns, and you may play land cards from your graveyard. That's a lot of effects, right? It's like a crucible that gives you extra lands, but it is in three colors, and the artwork I think is fantastic. Honestly, it's the art that drew me in. That card's really cool. What else do we got? Oh, Hazmed, Demigod of Despair. I like this card a lot. So it's a 2 minute 2 1 Devoid Flying. When you cast Hazmed, or your first spell each turn, you may pay one and create a 1-1 one, one colorless Eldrazi Scion creature token and then sacrifice an Eldrazi to tap target permanent. So this is a really good blue archetype enabler. Oh, something to mention. This uh, CCC symbol, someone made for the cube that we're going to be making. It's Caleb's custom cube and it's fully available. So all the cards that we make and put into the cube are going to have this symbol on them. Going to make it feel like its own cohesive set and it's going to be so awesome. So some people put that in their contest submissions. We'll do one more contest gallery here. We have Learned Pyromancer. Really fun card. When it enters the battlefield, it deals one damage to any target. So it's a two mana two two. That totally makes sense. Spell Mastery. If there are two or more instant or sorcery cards in your graveyard, Learned Pyromancer deals three damage to any target instead. So this is, I think it's very flavorful. The art fits really well, and it seems like it would play out quite nicely, right? If you play this on turn two, as like in a red aggressive deck, you just shoot your opponent for one. It's an okay rate. If you set up Spell Mastery, this becomes a two mana Flame Tongue Kavu that can also hit your opponent. And that becomes a really strong card. And I like this tension and balance of this card design where you need to do a little bit of planning to make your cards work as efficiently as you would like them to. And this is exactly that. And it fits the flavor of like, you know, a pyro Pyromancer learning how to shoot spells at people. So that's a really, really cool design. Probe Thought, each player reveals their hand. You may choose one non-land card revealed this way with converted mana cost X or less. If you do, copy that card and cast the copy without paying its mana cost. Whoa, that's pretty cool. I like the artwork on that. I don't actually know how to judge how that would play out, but it's an interesting design nonetheless. Ooh, here's one I liked. Kazat Imp Pyromancer. At the beginning of your end step, if an opponent lost life this turn, create a 1-1 black and red imp creature token. Whenever it or another creature you control dies, he deals one damage to each opponent. So basically, if you keep like sacrificing imps, you can just ping your opponent for one. Or, you know, you can just attack with your 1-1. One, one. It's like a really somewhat roundabout Goblin Rabble Master with a very strong static effect where if they wrath your board, they're going to take a whole bunch of damage. It's just a cool design that's not too strong, easy to interact with, and the art is fantastic. It fits perfectly. Okay, okay, one more. I have to talk about this one. Alpine Adjudicator. When Alpine Adjudicator enters the battlefield, XL targets spell or non-land permanent unless its controller pays one. So it's like Manatite, which I enjoy, but you can hit permanence too. And then when it leaves the battlefield, you return the XL card to its owner's hand. So basically, you want to hit your opponent when they don't have mana up, and then it returns the things to hand. It's like a very balanced reflector mage that can also hit spells and also attacks. I think this card is one of my favorite. I don't know, I just really like the design of this card. It does a lot of things. None of them are too broken, but it fits the blue-white tempo theme. It works with like the art, you know, the colors are blue and white, which fits the color of the card. It looks great. Okay, I lied, one more. Swan's Intervention. This is blue and a white. Until end of turn, if a source would deal damage to target permanent, prevent that damage. The source's controller draws cards equal to the damage prevented this way. So you can really get your opponent when they block, right? Let's say you have like a, I don't know, a 6-6 six, six or something and they chump block. And then you Swan's Intervention, they're 1-1, one, one, and then you just draw 6 cards. Um, you can turn the, your creature into a Swan if you have like a Seismic Assault or you want to throw a bunch of Lightning Bolts at your own creature. That can work. There's a lot of versatility to this card, and it does a lot of... I mean, it can be really strong in a... Probably more in like a Peasant Cube, where like creature combat's very important, because then you like snipe your opponent's blocker, draw a bunch of cards. Or you can, in a pinch, use it to save your creature. There's a lot of play, and it fits the theme of Swan, which is one of my favorite cards. So, that was round two. Out of those 100 cards from each gallery that I showed, and if you want to see all the links, they'll be in my Discord, or I'll post them in the video description, you can go through each one. Out of all of those 
Most of those cards were fantastically designed. Only four out of each 20 could advance, which is a really, really strict requirement. So these are the cards that you all voted to be in the finals. This is the, the final. There are 21 cards because there was a tie in one of them. Um, so there are 21 cards here, and these are all the cards you voted in. So we're going to go through each card in the finals before I announce the winner. Oil Feather Goose. This card looks amazing. The art is awesome, but if you'll note, whoever made this card went into like Photoshop or GIMP or something and actually put the feathers on top of the card. That is just such a nice little touch, and I think that's honestly what got them through this far. They even, you can see, like hand drew a little bit of art going over the border. Things like that really make a difference. So this is a one mana one one flyer when it enters the battlefield investigate. So it's already like a really good Thraben Inspector. And then it lets you sacrifice a clue to essentially do the Mother of Runes effect. Or it also gives you protection from colorless. So it's a really cool, versatile card. It's not too strong because, you know, you only crack one clue. But it's just really, really good. I like this card a lot. The next one we have is Civilization's Reach. Um, this, is this made by the same person? It is. Wow. Balrock really crushing it. They also did the... Uh, cropping the art out. I'm not sure if I like this effect as much, but it does look good in general. And this says instant search your library for a basic land card and put that card onto the battlefield tapped. Then shuffle your library. If you cast this card from your graveyard, search your library for land card instead. And then you can flashback sacrifice a land. So at the base rate, it's an instant speed rampant growth, which is okay. But if you spend three mana, you can basically just sacrifice that land to get a different land card and it enters untapped. So for three mana, you can get any land into play, or you can get a basic land and sacrifice a different one. So it's a lot of flexibility for the lands matter deck, and you can also just play it as an instant speed rampant growth. So it's a really, really cool card. Pull of the Wilderness is four mana sorcery with storm. I like the art a lot. And there seems to be a theme of people uh, putting uh, <laughs> art outside of the border. I'm not sure if I like that, but I think that is a thing they do in Magic. They also have the Caleb's Cube symbol over there. And this says, exile target card from your graveyard. You may play cards exile this way until the end of your next turn. And you may play an additional land this turn. So it's kind of like Escape to the Wilds, but that hits your graveyard. I think it's kind of like Past and Flames, but honestly quite a bit worse than Past and Flames because Past and Flames just hits all cards in your graveyard. So I think it's good, but it could actually probably be powered up. But I, I like the feel and aesthetic of it quite a bit. Oh, never mind. This is way better. I didn't realize you may play an additional land this turn gets copied with storm so that's actually quite good it's like a fast bond and past in flames okay that that actually is a really cool design i like that up next is heart metal confidant two mana two one you may look at the top card of your library at any time as long as an opponent has been dealt damage this turn you may play the top card of your library if you cast a spell this way this deals damage to you equal to that card's converted mana cost i believe the intention for this card was to be one of the best red cards like not necessarily on par with Ancestral, but a similar power level. And this does exactly that. It's like the Red Dark Confidant. Um, you can just play a bunch of cards from the top. It synergizes with the lands deck. If you have like Fast Bond plus this, you can play a bunch of lands. But there is a drawback where you lose or you get dealt damage equal to the mana cost of cards that you're casting. So just a really cool design and I love the artwork. Next we have a, this might be the only MDFC that made it into the finals. Bounty the Grove, Sheltering Grove. So... Four mana sorcery, draw a card for each creature you control. Really good base rate, um, especially in a cube like this where Eldrazi tokens are going to be around. That's just kind of important. And then, uh, are these from the same artist? They are, that's fun. And the backside is pay two life at green. If this man is spent on a creature spell, it can't be countered. Honestly, I would love for this card to exist in real life. This feels like a card that should exist. It's balanced, it does things, it does them well. Next we have extend reality. Mana cost is good. I don't necessarily like the aesthetic of this card. It really does not feel like a magic card. Um, but I guess it must have gotten voted in based on the effect, which is the next card you cast this turn has Storm. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> it's a really fun splashy effect. I don't know why the mana symbols look to be not so colorful. They look like muted or something. Um, but it's a splashy effect, right? If you cast this and then play like a Gilded Lotus, you get like six Gilded Lotuses. That'd be so fun. Um, casting, if you have multiple copies of this, that would get out of control. <laughs> but it's designed for cube, which is singleton, so that shouldn't be too big of a deal. Okay, there's another MDFC. This one I like a lot. 
So for those wondering why these cards are this way, I asked the community, um, as part of my cube, I wanted a cycle of modal double face cards where one half is a spell, the other half is a land. And it's a way, I wanted the spells to be reactive and I wanted the lands to be utility lands just to see how that would play out in cube. I think for constructed, these would be horrible, right? You would just put all of these in your deck and no lands and it would be kind of miserable. But in cube, the cost is that you have to draft these cards. And like normally you wouldn't put Void Slime into a cube because that's like a pretty limited like niche card. But now because you can play it as a land or a spell, I think the flexibility allows you to play these reactive spells in your deck that you otherwise wouldn't. So this is essentially Void Slime, counter target spell, activated or triggered ability um, for three mana. Not the best rate, but again, it's the flexibility which pushes it over the top because the backside is a green blue dual land that also lets you cast spells this turn as though they had flash just a great card i would love to play this in queue both sides are fun and exciting and honestly it would be hard to choose which side to play it as because both are good then we have abandoned gold mine uh add a colorless and then sacrifice it to destroy target land its controller creates a colorless gold artifact token that's a lot of fun so it's like strip mine but it gives them a, a gold a little bit of a consolation prize it's a more Fair strip mine, I would say. <laughs> then we have Descent of the Harvest Oral. Oral? Um, I think I know how to say that. And I think this is Birthing Pod. The artwork looks really cool. I like the aesthetic of this card. It says, Sacrifice a creature. Search your library for a creature card with converted mana cost equal to the sacrificed creature's converted mana cost plus the number of lore count counters on Descent of the Harvest Oral and put it onto the battlefield. So this enters with one. You sack a creature, get a creature with CMC one greater. Then you sack a creature, get something with CMC 2 greater, and then something with CMC 3 greater. This is that, that seems like a really fun card, and I would love to put this in a cube. It's like a birthing pod, but it happens instantly for 2 mana, and it only happens 3 times, so it doesn't like stay in play and win the late game. And it takes a lot of planning, because you have to do like some math to figure out what to sacrifice and what to get. So there's a lot of tension um, and decision making there, which I enjoy. Darkest Dreams I already talked about made it into the finals, which is a cool, a cool thing to do. Uh, Sierra the Genesis Root, I don't know if I talked about this card. I love this card. I think this might be my favorite design out of the whole cube. It's so good. So it's it's very simple. It has a couple things going for it. First of all, the artwork is phenomenal. Julie, Julie Dillon is an amazing artist and it just looks good. It's something you're excited to play. Um, the name, the Genesis Root, fits with the art. So I like that a lot. Um, it's a 1 mana 01 and it has all activated abilities of lands you control. And this effect is really nice because it does so many things but it does that in like a very simple to state way so at the base rate if you're just playing mono green this is a card that is green and it has tap add green so it's just a mana elf and that's those cards are great you play them all the time if you have like wasteland in your deck suddenly ciara can now sacrifice and kill a land from your opponent if you have fetch lands she can fetch and get a land if you have creature lands she can do that it's just like it's so versatile of a card for so simple of an effect. It looks great. I think this is probably my favorite design in the cube or in the contest submissions. It's, it's really nice. Um, not to spend too much time talking about that, but that's probably if I had to pick a winner, that's what I would pick. So we'll see if you guys chose that too. Here we have Petal Storm. Uh, three mana, add one mana of any color to your mana pool and Storm. This one is kind of interesting. I think in general, I like the idea of it. The problem with cards like this is they're very hard to balance. So Seething Song is three mana to add five. Um, it's only red, so it is a little bit worse, but that card is just medium. So the base rate of this card is you would want at least a storm count of five before it's like good enough. Um, and normally you want to cast rituals to start off the storm rather than later on, because like, what are you casting before Petal Storm? That being said, this is a fantastic card to flash back with something like Yawgmoth's Will or Past and Flames, right? Because if you cast it the first time and get like, spend three mana to get three, it gives you Storm and that's fine and you, it fixes your mana. What really matters is the second cast where you have Storm count of 10 and suddenly, you know, all of your mana woes are taken care of. So there is a bit of tension here. I think it probably needs a bit of refinement, but I, I like the idea of it at least. Silverstone Relic, another card where people are uh, extending the art over the box. Is that a thing? Maybe I'm just missing and that's just a thing that happened. Not sure I'm a fan of it, but it does look all right. The one mana buyback scry one. So basically, 
uh, for one colorless, you can keep buying this back before it resolves and keeps crying. And then eventually, when it enters the battlefield, you can draw a card and then spend five mana to return it to its owner's hand. So it's a really cool effect that gives any deck this type of like preordain type of effect. Um, it ends up being like three mana preordain, right? Scry one, scry one, draw a card. But in like in generic mana cost, I think that's a great rate. And it would just be a great card to pick up. It's like what Sensei's Divining Top should be in cube. Because the problem with top is like, you just end up looking at the same three cards over and over. My biggest concern I would have with this card from a gameplay standpoint is like the same problem with Sensei's Divining Top where, you know, people are scrying one like five times per turn and that just takes up a lot of time. But there's only one copy, so it wouldn't be too bad, I'm thinking. But yeah, my only concern about this card is it just makes someone take so many game actions that would take a lot of time. Norm's Almsman we talked about before, so nice job making it into the finals. Oblivion Mox. Zero mana. When it enters the battlefield, reveal your hand. Target opponent may choose a non-land card from it. If they do, discard that card, then draw a card. And it adds one mana of any color. So this card is really strong, right? It Vendillion clicks yourself, uh, except you discard it. So it's not card disadvantage like Mox Diamond would be. And it adds one mana of any color. Um, I think something that could be interesting is basically making it add one mana of any color equal to the card that they chose to discard or something. Because right now it feels still way too good. Um, you could also play this with an empty hand and then it ends up being zero mana, draw a card. Oh, I see. You only draw a card if they discard. Okay, so if you have no hand, then it's just a zero mana mox. It seems good. I feel like it needs a little bit more to be balanced, but I like the idea of it. It's a mox that would be playable in some formats. I don't know. Maybe I'm undervaluing how good Vendillion Click is. It could be totally fine. Maybe if you did two cards, that could like decimate your hand. Then we have Sweeping Calamity for X Mardu. Each player sacrifices a creature for each black spent to cast this spell. Sacrifices a land for each red. Sacrifices a non-creature, non-land permanent for each white. Oh, I love it. So this is like Death Cloud, but you get to choose uh, what gets sacrificed. But at the very least, it's going to be like smallpox essentially. I feel like I almost would like it to discard cards because um, that's typically what things like these do. But like if you just spend a bunch of red, you can like nuke their lands. I think it's quite good. I think it probably needs to be a bit stronger, right? You can cast this for three and it's each player sacrifices a creature, a land and a non-creature non-land permanent. Uh, maybe that's OK because it, it can scale up quite well. Actually, I think this is totally fine. I like this design quite a bit. So Ruya made it into the finals too. Really cool card. Um, we talked about it before, though. Soul Rig is fun. Um, it's a obviously play on Soul Ring. So it's a one mana haste and it can add colorless. And then if it's a creature, right? So you can crew it for one, it adds double colorless. So this is fun. It basically turns any creature you have into a mana elf that taps for colorless if you're just tapping this for mana. But at the base rate, it's a one mana two two haste that can attack too. So I like this design. It's funny, this card got in on a, uh, a disqualification. Someone in the finals didn't put artist credit on their card super unfortunate to miss out in the finals but uh this was like one vote behind them so that got into the finals on that here we have mirror legion militant it's a one mana two one replicate and that's it it's it's a simple yet powerful effect whenever you cast a spell you can copy it for each time you pay this replicate cost i'm a little worried this card might be too good for one mana you get a two one for two mana you get two two ones for three mana you get six power for four mana you get eight power i would probably try it as it is it feels because they have one toughness like it would be easy to deal with them but i'm just a little bit worried of this power level being slightly too strong the problem is how do you balance it right like if you make the replicate cost anything more suddenly you're spending three mana for two two ones and that that's nowhere near vintage cube power level so maybe this is exactly where the power level should be and it's just it's just good. I honestly could see that being the case. This card we talked about before. Nice job making it to the finals. And I really like this art. I don't think I said that before, but I like fractals. This looks like, um, what is it, benzene? I don't remember what the, it's like a metal that makes these shapes. It's whatever in Pepto-Bismol. I guess it's bismuth. That's bismol. Yeah, that makes sense. I think bismuth uh, looks like these types of patterns. It's a really cool metal. And I think there's a, a glitch with my website. There should be one more. Yes, Shiv's Core. So this says add red for each ma to your mana pool for each land card in your graveyard. Very simple design. Um, 
but it does a lot of things. So my cube has a lands matter theme. There's a lot of like sacrificing lands and synergies like that. So I think this card could be a lot of fun. Like if you have life from the loam and you're like putting lands in your graveyard, you fetch things, add a bunch of mana. I think this card could be a lot of fun. I really like the design. It feels like a card that could exist, especially with the aesthetic that the person who made this went for. It has like nice flavor text and stuff. So I really like that card too. So those are the finalists and we're going to go through uh, what place each card was in now. So let's get started. In 21st place of the finals with 20 votes, we have Solrig. Next with 23 votes, in 20th place, we have Petalstorm. Jumping up a bit to 28 votes, it is Bounty of the Grove, Sheltering Grove. Just barely higher with 29 votes, it's Pull of the Wilderness. With 31 votes in 17th place is Sweeping Calamity. These are getting really close. 32 votes in 16th place is Extend Reality. And then with 33 votes, Darkest Dreams. 34 votes is Ruya Masked Rebel. 36 votes, a little bit higher, is Abandoned Gold Mine. And there's actually a tie at this position, three way. So Abandoned Gold Mine, also Descent of the Harvest Oral, and also Closure Primordial Gateway all have 36 votes. Kind of crazy, but. They're all great cards. So now we're reaching the top 10, and the 10th card is, with 37 votes, Silverstone Relic. Really cool, good value card. In 9th place, with 38 votes, we have Oblivion Mox. And then, honestly, after here, something weird happens, where it went from, I think it was 36 or 38 votes, up to 46. So, I think, basically, these cards are kind of head and shoulders above the rest, at least in terms of how it was voted. Um, so this is 8th place, and it is Civilization's Reach. Really well-designed card. With 48 votes, we have Heart Metal Confidant. And with 50 votes, the card that just barely missed the top 5, coming in at 6th place. Top 5 get prizes, so this one just, just missed it, is... Norn's Almsman. Just barely out of top 5. That means the remaining 5 cards are all getting prizes. And we'll go through those now. So with 52 votes, coming in at 5th place, we have Mirror Legion Militant. I'm very happy to see this win. Um, so all, again, top 5 are getting proxies signed of all the cards they've designed. So th this, is, this is kind of significant, and it's awesome to see that. But people want to know who got 1st place, right? So there's 4 cards left. Let's see who it is. With 53 votes, barely coming into 4th place, we have Iridescent Disposition in 3rd place, or 4th place. And it's kind of nice, top 3 was also cut and dry, head and shoulders above the rest. Bumping up to 61 votes in 3rd place, we have Foil Feather Goose. I really think the art really drove this card home. It just, it feels great, it's nice to look at, and the extra like feathers and stuff were just a great touch. In second place, with 63 votes, we have Tiara the Genesis Root, my favorite card in the contest. It got second place, which is nice. And that means it first place with 72 votes. Change that live for you guys. 72 votes. We have Shiv's Core. So first place Shiv's Core, add red to your mana pool for each land card in your graveyard. You... Got the most votes in the contest by a significant amount. You beat out second place by nine votes and were head and shoulders above the remainder of the card. So well done to whoever designed Shiv's Core. And honestly, I want to say this again. Just because you didn't make the finals or you didn't make the top 100, there were so many fantastically designed cards that, you know, didn't get voted for whatever reasons. I think there was a tendency to vote for splashy cards over... Um, Cards that functioned, although honestly, in the finals, all of these cards are fantastically designed. Um, but they're like, if you go through and look at all of the cards, honestly, everyone who submitted a card to this contest, you're awesome. I really enjoyed all of the cards to look at, and we're gonna make a fantastic cube out of these. Specific congratulations to our finalists, our top five and top 20, even ones who made top 100, but everyone did a really fantastic job. This has been so much fun, and obviously we couldn't do it without you guys. So I will be working on getting the prizes to the top five. However, I also have executive power to add winners that I enjoyed. 
who may or may not have made it. So we can do that now. So first I'm just going to go through cards that I have not yet highlighted or maybe did not advance into further rounds that I thoroughly enjoyed and I am very happy with the designs of. First is Shifet Rejuvenator. It's a 2 mana 2-2 two -two flying. And the effect is really cool. It's as long as an opponent controls more lands than you, you may play land cards from your graveyard. And then whenever land enters the battlefield under your control, you gain one life. So it's a really strong Courser of Crufix type of effect that you're gaining life. And then you can play land cards from your graveyard, but only if you have fewer lands. I think I like that design quite a bit. Next is Time Gambler. I love this card. I don't know why it's so pixelated, but it's essentially the red time walk and the blue time walk put together. So red, red, instant adventure. Take an extra turn after this one. And then at the beginning of that turn's end step, you lose the game. And then uh, Time Gambler is a 6 mana 2-2 two, two. when it enters, take an extra turn. So for 8 mana, you can take 2 extra turns. And the way that it stacks is you would get a full turn and then a turn that kills you at the end if you cast both of these in one turn. Um, I think probably it needs a bit of balancing because for 6 mana, a creature that takes turns is very easy to abuse. So if this was just like a spell or something that's less difficult to go infinite with i think this design would be fantastic like basically if you even if it was just a split card of time gambit and time warp on the same card i think that could make for a really fun cube experience because i've wanted uh the red time walks to be in cube but they're too bad to play as their own so you need them on a different card and i think this kind of does that Unrent unrelenting tithe i mean obviously i love this card counter target non-creature spell unless this controller pays one and then it has Storm. So it's a really good, like, white answer to things. It's, like, the perfect mana tie. This card is sweet. Animar Corrupted Harbinger. I like a lot. I like the design of It's a 5 mana 4-6. And lands you control have, sacrifice this land to add colorless, colorless. And then whenever you cast a colorless spell with converted mana cost 7 or greater, you may return two land cards from your graveyard to the battlefield. So it's a really cool enabler. I wanted colorless... Eldrazi themes and I wanted lands to be part of the colorless theme so this just does both of those it lets your lands enable like big Eldrazi I like this card like a lot a lot Trona Elvis Treasurer is really cool two meta one two whenever uh, they enter the battlefield create a treasure token and then you can sacrifice lands to make treasure tokens but you have to tap it and then sacrifice a treasure to get a land card from your graveyard to your hand so at the very least this is a two meta one two that can bring a land from your graveyard to your hand it's a landfall enabler. It's, I think it needs a bit more tweaking. Like the effects right now are kind of one dimensional. I think if you added a bit more play to this card, it could be cool. But on its own, it's, you know, it's very close to an awesome design. Godless Ritual, I like. Um, the, the name and the aesthetic of the card is not amazing, but I like the effect. So it's black. Target opponent draws two cards, then reveals their hand, and you choose not two non land cards from it, and they discard them. So it's just really backbreaking, like double thought sees. You are down a card because this gives them two cards and then discards two cards. So it is card disadvantage. And I think it's a pretty balanced like double thought sees that could be playable. Um, Scattered Sparks I think is very close to getting there. The art I'm not a huge fan of. Um, when you cast this, it does one damage to any target. When it enters the battlefield, it does one damage to any target. And when it leaves the battlefield, it does one damage to any target. And then if an effect would cause you to sacrifice a permanent, you may sacrifice this instead. I think the design is very close. I think the last, like, there's too much text here. I think you could basically have this as one line, like, when Scattered Sparks enters or leaves the battlefield, it does one damage to any target. And then, like, I don't know, maybe something else. Because as it stands right now, it's one mana for a shock, which is pretty good. And then you can sacrifice it to do one extra. It's just a sacrifice enabler. It's close, but I think it needs a little bit more refining. It's too much text. And this last line is very kind of counterintuitive. Stifling to Moondust, I like. I think this card, I don't even think it made it past the first round. I was thinking this was going to make it to the finals. It's a Convoke White Counterspell. When you cast a spell, you may copy it for each creature that convoked it, and you may choose new targets for the copies. I think my biggest issue with this card is I think it should only be castable via Convoke. Like, basically, if there was a White Counterspell that you could only cast using creatures, I think that could be balanced in something White should get. Um, but the fact that you're copying it and you can like absolutely obliterate the stack could make this card way too strong. If it was literally just like white, 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 convoke counter target spell, I, I think I would be all about that. And I might honestly put something like this in my cube. Void burn another card. I don't quite know why it didn't get farther, but it's two mana for two damage to any target. 
and you can replicate by putting cards from exile into your opponent's graveyard for one mana. Maybe it's too strong, and that could be why, because for like three mana, it's four damage to anything, and it kind of grows out of control quite quickly, but I think it's a really solid card. I like the aesthetic. It's well-designed. Geo Whisperer um, is an Eldrazi 2-2. Whenever a Locust enters the battlefield, you add colorless to your mana pool. Um, for those who don't know, Locust is essentially the basic land type I've assigned to colorless for my cube because it's weird that colorless doesn't get a basic land type. So basically think of this like wastes or any colorless land. Um, and then if you control five or more Locuses, create a 1-1 Eldrazi Scion. Um, really cool. Maybe too strong, but honestly, probably fine. I think this card... Might end up in the cube. I like the aesthetics. I really like this gem. It just looks really cool. So um, I think this is one that barely got out on uh, tiebreakers. And I'm really sorry um, to this person. I changed the tiebreaker system based around this card, actually, because it, it should have gotten in. And that was on me. So I like that card. Void Spiral until end of turn. If you would produce any amount of colorless, you produce an extra colorless. It's high tide for colorless. What's not to like? Force of Protection, there's a lot of takes on white counter spells. This one's quite nice. You may pay one life and XL white card from your hand rather than pay the mana cost. And this says target spell or permanent you control gains protection from colorless or the color of your choice until end of turn. So you can use this to counter counter spells, protect your creatures. I think the base cost, I know it's a plan force of will, but the base cost should be much cheaper, I think. And then it would be way more playable. If this is like one in a white and then you can pay it for free, I would totally play this card. But the fact that you can really only realistically play this card for its alternate cost makes this quite weak, I think. Essence Salvage, black black, draw a card for each permanent that left the battlefield this turn. Probably too strong, but I really like the effect. But this is going to end up being like 2 mana draw 10 a lot of the time, and that's probably too good. Grasp of the Void, I like this one. Um, this kind of, this will end up in my cube, I will say that. To some effect, this card is going to end up in my cube. Uh, exile any number of target colored spells and counter any number of target abilities from colored sources. So this just kind of clears the stack from colored cards and it can cost CC that has affinity for colorless creatures. So I like this card. I'm probably going to work with whoever made this to come up with the final design, like getting the art and stuff. But this something to, something to this effect will end up in my cube for sure. It That Swallows Luck, very pixelated as well. Um, whenever a player casts a spell, they create a colorless misfortune aura curse enchantment token with enchant player and at the beginning of enchanted player's upkeep, that player loses one life. So basically, whenever they cast a spell, they get a curse and then they can sacrifice curses to draw a card. Um, they came up with the, the two colorless hybrid. So basically, if you're playing this, you're playing colorless. So you have the ability to like crack your, clues, or your, your curses easier, um, but your opponent's going to have to spend like three mana to sacrifice their curses unless... They want to keep taking damage. So it really just puts the pressure on. It's good in, in like an Eldrazi beatdown deck. I like this card. I don't know why I like this card, but I do. Kikiara, Thousand Year Elder. You may look at the top card of your library anytime. You can cast instant and sorcery spells from the top. It's a three mana one one. So it's, you know, kind of vulnerable. It needs to stay in play. And then for triple red, you can sacrifice it to copy target instant or sorcery spell for each other instant or sorcery spell you've cast. So it's like a Thousand Year Storm on legs. Not too broken. Um, I think it's just a great enabler and would be very fun to have in cube. And it looks good. And then lastly, Takusa Nochi, the distributor. This card is kind of understated, so that's probably why it didn't get voted. But things like this are very important effects to have in a cube because um, it's a roll. It's an enabler, right? So it's a two mana O2, and it has three abilities: sacrifice a creature, gain life; sacrifice a creature to prevent the next two damage that would be dealt to target creature, so it can protect itself. And then whenever a creature dies, each opponent loses one life. So just having this on the battlefield really makes combat and intricate like decisions difficult for your opponent. I think an effect like this would be absolutely fantastic in something like a peasant cube. Um, things like this, like Blood Artist is very good in this. This effect would be very good. I don't know if it's quite good enough for a vintage cube, and maybe that's why it didn't get voted in. But I really like the versatility and the effects of this card. Anyway, now that we've gone through the cards, the cards that I'm selecting as my own custom winners to win the contest and get their own proxies as well, we have Shafet Rejuvenator. I think it's a great design. It's a card I would love to put into my cube, so I'm very happy to have that one. Uh, the next one I have is Animar Corrupted Harbinger. We're going to have to figure out how to get a higher quality image. This is a little bit too blurry to print out, but I like the effect. It's really cool. And then the last one that I'm choosing is like kind of two. And this one, I'm not sure how I'm going to do this yet. So if you've made these cards, please talk to me. It's a Unrelenting Tithe. 
and Stifle into Moondust. Basically, I like both of these. I like the art from Stifle into Moondust, and I like the effect from Unrelenting Tithe. Probably I'll end up giving you both uh, your own signed proxies because the effects are really nice, but I think I'm going to work with you to get a design that works for the cube because I think essentially both of these could end up in the cube to some effect. I'm not sure what if it's going to be like a melded version of these cards or not, but I guess I'll just say it. You're both going to get proxies. We're going to figure out how to make things that fit. I think they might need a bit of fine tweaking. Um, and that might be true for some of the others like uh, Animar and Shifet Rejuvenator, I think. Might need a little bit of work, but they, you guys win the contest. And you're getting signed proxies. Thank you to everyone who participated. Again, this was so much fun. I will be running more contests every month. So check out the Discord if you want to join in on those. And I'm also planning on running smaller contests weekly on the over the weekends. And just like put up a gallery, vote on your card. There'll be more community run. So if any of this sounds fun to you, uh, please hop into the Discord. We're going to keep doing these. And the next contest theme will be commander card so get ready to design for that thank you guys so much for watching thank you to everyone who participated this was a lot of fun